All right, welcome back. We're here in the duck call room. It's a beautiful, I don't know what day it is. Day in March. Yeah, it's a spring. It's a springtime <laughs> yeah, all I day. Know is a day in March. It's a day in March, and things are starting to turn yellow. Mm. So. And and I'm my fishing antennas are Uh-oh. starting to buzz, boys. It's the middle of March, and and me and Si have not been fishing one time. I know. Me neither. And it's killing me. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, it's killing me. I guess we're trying to get off of it or something i don't know uh, no that ain't i'm not no. i ain't got no time i'm waiting on the man that takes me you waiting on your butler uh, well no i'm just waiting on the man that i'm got, waiting got the truck and the boat <laughs> and all the equipment well i'm waiting on and i told him hey i'll gas the truck and boat up well i was fixing to say i've been waiting on my loan approval <laughs> so loan i can get some gas for what so i can get some gas in the boat hey. You don't have to go no further yeah, no. wrong. But anyways, look, I got a question for you. <clears throat> well, I got all kinds of answers. want to know the answer to it. For me? Yeah, for, well, all y'all. Oh, okay, go ahead. What constitutes a midlife crisis? Oh. The first definition is. Convertible? Midlife. What, at what point does a man feel like he's at the middle of his life? I would say 40. 40? Some, yeah, 40 to 50. I, th- I think it's different 50. for different people. That's a good That's a good place, 40 to 50. Yeah, somewhere in there. Because uh, then you, you start the deal about, what am I doing? Some would argue going neck deep in jiu-jitsu is, training yeah. at 47 would well, be considered yeah. a midlife <laughs> crisis. But I also don't want to get choked out. So <laughs> I always, I, I'm sliding over a little bit here. I, I always oh. remember when it hit me and I said, what am I doing? There's got to be more to life than just what is going on here. What were you doing when you were? I was in the army. Forty-six. I was in the army. So you're at the tail end of your career. Yeah, I had my career. <clears throat> yeah. You had a midlife crisis. Well, no, I just had a, a midlife doubt. Okay. Hmm. What is what is going on? Why didn't you do accomplish something in your short short life you've lived so far? Oh, now see, now I got to know. Yeah, what well, did you not accomplish that you felt the need? To, nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> nothing, because, hey, it, that was the problem. My whole life, all of my mentors and all of my teachers, you know, all I ever heard from them was, well, look, hey, you find something that you do that you're really good at, okay, and then you give it all you got. And it only took you 65 well, years. Hey, it took me 65 years, and look, it was the fan that told me what I was good at. Blowing smoke. Hey, I make people laugh. So the question I got to know is why would you bring up a midlife crisis? Well, uh, I found myself today. Well, of course, you know, I've been, I've been, uh, I started this jujitsu journey a little over a year ago. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's pretty late in life to be doing something like that. But, you know, I thought, what the heck? Not you know? really. Not, you enjoy it, right? Oh, I love it. I well, love it. Then no. Uh, Anything you can find that you enjoy doing yeah. and you have the money or the time to do it, go for it. Well. Okay, because life is too short. Okay, because you'll wake up, <clears throat> you know, and then you'll be made. Yeah. Because an old man told me when I was about 25 and he was about 65, he said, hey, you better enjoy it. He said, you'll wake up tomorrow and you'll be made. And he was like 65. So. The reason I said that because today I trained with the Leos. What's the, a Leo? The noon law, law enforcement, enforcement. officers. Mm-hmm. So just I was I wanted to see where I was at. Okay. Are you thinking <laughs> about a career change? No. Oh, okay. I was just no. I'm I just <laughs> I, I was just trying to say okay. I'm I'm just gonna train with the Leos. See where my game's at. Let me tell you something. I ain't there yet. <laughs> Well, no, 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 no. There yet, boys. Uh, I could already see where this was uh, going, okay? Because <laughs> you got to understand something about a policeman, especially if he's been in it for a few years, okay? They they have the saying about, oh, I'm sorry about that. I went in cop mode, okay? Because when we was filming with Duck Dynasty and I did a ride along with the police, oh, when they put the cuffs on, uh, and they can't help themselves, okay? <laughs> it's no nice, it's no uh, gentle. Uh, it's, <laughs> hey, golly, <laughs> what are you doing trying to cut my wrist off? You know, and he uh, said, oh, I'm sorry, I was in cop mode. You know, and like Willie, Willie got in the back of the car. Willie's okay? afraid of cop mode. No, no, and if he if they hadn't let him out, he'd have been whimpering like a little baby. 
He said, whoa, 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 I got to get out of here. Okay. And then he was telling me, what are you talking about? He said, open the car door. I've got to get out. It's a little tight back there. Because, hey, okay, no, this, this was not made for comfort. No, no, you don't end up there for a yeah, pleasurable yeah, ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't no, they, they, they ain't worried about how you feel not, once hey, you get drop there. Drop me off in the corner, you know, and yeah. you get a nice, easy ride. No. Yeah, they're not trying to make it comfortable for you. Yeah, no. You so, and, and, and let's be real. If you're getting cuss put on you, you don't deserve well, no, no. to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, that's why me, it's yes, sir, <laughs> no, sir. That's right. Yeah, what, so, you know, because, hey, I've actually had them pull me over in Texas. And they actually got behind open doors and drew their pistols. On you? Yeah. What were you doing? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was driving a car that that car, that same kind of car was involved in a robbery. Well, you got to understand something. In Louisiana back when I was a young man, just learning to drive and all that, when a cop pulled you over, you got out of the vehicle and walked back to them. You walked to the cop uh, car? Oh, uh, uh, no, no, no. I got out in Texas and was starting to walk back. And, hey, the doors were open and guns were drawn and they were doing this. And, talking about, and I, I'm going, ah, ah, hold it. <laughs> and they said, what are you doing? Uh, I said, I'm coming to back you, you to the car. Yeah. And he said, get back in that car. Yeah. Because, hey, them barrels on them 38s. Look like a 105 Hauser. Okay? <laughs> you know? And I'm saying, whoa, holy guy. Uh, you know? I made that mistake one time, uh, too. Don't get out of a car until they pulled tell over. You. I mean, I knew I got pulled over. It was for speeding. <laughs> like, I mean, it was very, very clear while I was getting pulled over. I was like, well, I'll go talk to him, you know, whatever. I wasn't trying to hide nothing. I opened that door, and I heard that over that loudspeaker, get back in your truck. I said, oh, yes, sir. My yeah. apologies. Yeah, no, 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 and no. I was no. sitting there just like this with my hands out the window, yeah. like, man, that's on me, bro. I, 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 I know I was doing eighty and a seventy. That's on me. Like, I, guilty. No, like, no, because hey, look, they walked up to the car because he told me the same thing. Yeah, when I got back in the car, and he, you know, they walked up and had their had their pistols in their hand, one on each side. They you know, didn't go that far it. with me. I got a leg out before yeah. they hollered. No, no. I said, yeah, he okay, said, never he mind. said, hey, let me see your driver's license, wallet, and driver's license, and all that. And I'm like this with a steering wheel. <laughs> and I said, you got your gun cocked and pointed in my direction. And I said, I'm not moving my hands until that gun is, you know, at least pointing away from me. <laughs> I said, I'm not being belligerent here. I'll do whatever you say, but with you got the gun the cocked, nope, I ain't moving. What year was this? Uh, this was back way back here. <laughs> 72. <laughs> he he literally scared the you know what hey, you know, he had to change your draws. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Cause no hey. Mm. Oh man, uh, I love so it. I hunt, Good times. I hunt and I know what a gun does. <laughs> okay, so I don't want you pointing at me. Okay, mm. <laughs> you know, like you told me, hey, cuff me, take me to jail, whatever. But I you know no I. I ain't moving. Oh, ain't no doubt. Well, let's take our first break. Let's move on into that. Johnny D going to keep moving via that QB. I'm working out. I ain't got as much time as I used to, so I work out here. That's good. QB will keep you at your weight. It'll help you maintain? No, no. Yeah, Yeah, because I I stay right around like 170, anywhere from 170 to 172 something. Yeah. Okay, and all it is is I do a little pattern. And you used and, to and prior, well, you used to prior to that stay up yeah. there about 175. Oh, no, no. Yeah, so. it was, uh, you know. And, I'm and maintaining most of, it, 218. Most of it was right here. Good. <laughs> all of it. A little spare, <laughs> little spare <laughs> car. I had a bowling ball. Well, what look. What's the deal with that? About what? Is that all your weight. Not Al. Most of it is <laughs> belly. <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, I don't not, know, I, but look, summer's right around the corner, so, so you're going to use right your right cubie to get back in your beach bod, ain't you? That way you'd be out there flexing. Send one know. of these down on the, on the lake. <laughs> I, I don't know nothing about no beach bod, son. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, look, what, what is your favorite thing about the cubie, si? Huh? What's your that favorite thing? I can thing? do it in my recliner. Ain't that the While truth. watching a 
Live at Delta. Look, if you're new to this show and you don't know, QB is a compact seated elliptical that lets you get fit while you sit. It's low impact, so it's easy on the joints, and its compact design fits almost anywhere so you can stay active while you watch TV, work, or spend time with family. QB can help assist with rehab. Two out of three QB users say it's helped them get stronger and improve their mobility, just like Cy. QB comes almost fully assembled. All you need to do is use screws to attach the pedals, and QB even includes the screwdriver. So... QB is a great way to boost your energy and to start building up your endurance. Every QB elliptical comes with a 30-day risk-free trial, and you can visit QB.com slash duck to get free shipping on your new QB today. That's spelled C-U-B-I-I. Get the QB elliptical that's right for you. Go to QB.com slash duck. Cy loves it. And get in shape, boys. Cy loves it. So will you. So, Stalin, you you ain't ready. Is no, what you say? No, I'm not even. I'm, uh, you know, good night. Five years from being decent, maybe. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm training about. So you're saying there's a big difference in when you do something as a hobby mm-hmm. versus having to do it as your livelihood, essentially. Oh like, man. <laughs> well, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta realize, okay, cause like I was saying, if they've been in, like, you know, say they've been in, the, in, in the police force for ten years. Okay, they've got all that training. Okay, and it's you know it's like a you know muscle memory. He was talking about muscle memory mm-hmm. earlier. Okay, all that stuff because like that's why when they're doing something, okay, it's cop mode. They go from okay, I'm just a dad or whatever. When the time comes, okay, and they shift from dad to cop mode, it's entirely all business then. <laughs> Okay, and there's no nice, no nice. No, uh-uh. it's cop. This is but, cop mode. But is it weird that I enjoy going in there and getting smashed? Yes. By law enforcement. Well, no, no, no that's correct. No, you're no getting, it's not. You're that getting weird. something. You're that's getting not something weird. out of it. No, it's not uh, weird because okay. I tell you why he's doing it. He's getting better. Yeah. You well, don't. No, no. You don't get better when you win. Yeah. You get better when you lose. There's no doubt about that. I still don't want to stop breathing due to somebody's. Hey, you know, you know what you like, but you know what you learn. Don't do that again. Yeah, your incentive is just what he just said. Is to keep breathing. You learn good things. Keep breathing. Yeah. Okay, so don't let me, don't let him get me in that coat because when he does, it lights out. Yeah. Yeah. Your first, pretty much first two years, you learn how to defend and how to escape. Because if you can't do that, you can't do anything. But the problem is when when you're rolling with somebody at a higher level, they know how to keep you from escaping <laughs> and defending. And defending. <laughs> no, 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 so no. you just sit there and get smashed over and over and over. But you learn how to be, how to relax under a stressful, a very stressful situation. Yeah. Mentally because, tough too. Yeah. Because here's the thing: if you don't, you're burning energy that you don't have to spare. That's right. Okay, where the person. And the one that, the reason I've watched him, okay, and that's why I told him, if you enjoy it, go for it. Yeah. And I've watched you, okay, going through it, okay. And when you, you and uh, Michael, the arm wrestling champ, yeah, okay, when he grabbed you, I see. You I made, didn't learn much there. That was no contest. Well, no, no, no. But you got to understand, <laughs> this guy's a giant, and he's, <laughs> he's strong. Talking about, he's talking about those grip breaks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you. As go. Michael grabbed him, and it wasn't. What three seconds, and he done busted busted out. And Michael, he Michael, he, hold it. Let me grab that again. You can't do that. You know, we grabbed it again. Stone just, you know. So it's impressive because when I've been watching him do stuff, he would show people. Somebody you would come by, and he'd say, "Hey, let me show you this hope." Oh yeah, learning. when he was learning all of it, yeah. he used to throw Johnny D on the floor in my office yeah. every day. I went down quickly. <laughs> no, no. So that was what, like a wet rag. That was what was impressive because yeah. I told him, I said, "This has nothing to do with strength, technique." I said, "This is all about knowledge and technique of how to beat it." Yeah. The problem is when you run across somebody with the same said technique, then it becomes a little bit about. Well, strength. I don't know either that. Or <laughs> yeah. they're, they're so muscle, muscular. That you can't get your arm in position to make the hold. Because uh, he tried that with Michael. He was going to put the choke hold on him. 
No. His was, muscles were too big. Too broad. Yeah, yeah, he was too big. He was the size of a refrigerator. He couldn't lock his arms down. <laughs> a big one, too. Not like one you keep in a garage for uh, bottled water. Like a double. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was side by, by side. <laughs> I will French say doors. this. I, I've made a lot of good friends in law enforcement through through doing this, through this journey. And uh, there's no better humans on the face of the earth. Yeah. Then, well, that's then why those who have chose to serve, and they do that for a living. They serve us for a living. No, no. Okay? That's why I, when I run into and, and was fortunate enough to meet, okay, soldiers that was in black ops and then the SEALs, Navy SEALs and all that, okay, these are a different breed of, of men. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this thing about, okay, Mind over matter. Okay, it's the real deal. Okay, because a lot of time I used to not believe it. I was like, I, I met a guy one time, and he was in the barracks, and he was sitting on the top bunk, on a double double bunk. He's sitting there in a yoga position. Yeah, and he's got his eyes closed, and somebody Did he have his head, hands out like. Oh this? no, no, he had them like this. Just okay, crossed. So, yeah. He, so he's in a yoga position, okay, with his legs crossed. Okay. It took me two hours to get like, un- uncorked if I if the guy would get that. <laughs> so anyway, you know, they were saying he's not there. Uh, you know, that's what the guys was telling me. He's not there. He there. And I said, no, nah, that's bull. You know, and they said, oh, no, he's, he's not really, he's not there. And I said, no, he's there. Do you think he was remembering the days of growing up and grabbing goldfish? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know what it was. That's okay, a but hey, when point. I tell you when they said he was not at home, <laughs> that was a true statement because the guy went and got a needle what? out of his sewing kit. Huh? One, one of the big ones, yeah. And this guy is like this with his eyes closed. And look, you know, at first he made, he just made it like an eighth inch, the, the needle – the so needle point, eighth inch. He says, is that enough? And I said, enough for what? He said, I'll fix sticky. No. Okay. This is a 10 out of 10. Don't recommend. Right? I thought, I thought this, this was a, okay. a real uh, story. But anyway, this is a real story. Okay? Because, hey, he said, that's an eighth of inch. He said, oh, Joe, just so you'll, you'll actually believe it, let me slide it out in and make it a quarter inch. And he actually got a ruler and pulled a quarter inch of his needle out. Okay? And this guy's like this. And look, he just right in his behind, you know, and he said, look, you watch. He just, well, hey, he should have flinched or done something. <laughs> He's hustling you. Oh, no, no, there was no hustle on this, okay, because, hey, as soon as he did this, it was blood. Was, was there blood? Oh, there was blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just never came and, to? Hey, he, did, he didn't even move. He wasn't there. He was not at home. Where was he? He had left his body and was somewhere floating around looking at stuff or something. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, okay, I, I would have never uh. believed that to be possible. But I seen that because I'm looking, okay, because after he came back home. So this old boy passed advanced interrogation technique. Oh, no, no, no. What are you talking about? He wasn't home. I'm telling you. He was not mentally there. In his body, because, hey, look, I'm telling you, you can't fake nothing. If somebody sticks a needle in you, you're going to jump. <laughs> and look, he did not jump. And I'm looking at the blood, you know. So when know. when did he come back? Hey, about an hour later, we come back in and he said, yeah, what's going on, fellas? Did he ask you why his <laughs> rear end was bleeding? No, no. Somebody said, hey, have you, have you noticed your uh, pants there? And he said, what are you talking about? And then he looked down, and there's a spot of blood about that back around where it bled. And he said, oh, y'all been climbing around again, huh? Oh, so they had done this before. They'd done it before. <laughs> yeah. So that's why uh, I'm telling you, this mind over matter stuff, okay, because you got to think about, you know, hell week for the seals. Did you see any mushrooms laying around anywhere? Uh, hey, look, <laughs> I, he may have been on something, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Whatever it was, he wasn't home when they stuck him with that needle. I was more inclined to think Cy may have been on something. <laughs> oh, no, no. no. Oh, that's what Phil said, but no, I wasn't on nothing. So, okay, because there's some things, if I don't see it, I won't believe it. That's right there with that map. That was one stuff. of them that, okay, no, I won't believe this. Mm. You got to understand, when they're training. 
So you understand why we're having a hard time. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so, I can, <laughs> hey, I can understand why he said, well, I had a, a defined midlife crisis for me. Okay, because all men go through it. Uh-oh. Yeah, they do. All men go through midlife crisis. What are we? Hey, let's let's take a break. All right. And come straight back into that. Let's do no, that. No. Johnny D, you still having fun watching high school football? No, I'm not because I True Bill saved me on that one because I I wanted to watch the one game that my cousin was in in Colorado and I signed up but it's a monthly thing and they were like hey bro you're about to pay for this and I was like oh thank goodness I was about to have Iowa wrestling matches subscription see but that's with, why True Bill's important with True Bill you can supersize your you, your meal every month because they saved you that money thank you ain't that something look from forgotten free trials to automatic renewals when big companies keep charging you True Bill is your secret weapon. To save you money on subscriptions you don't need. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or just simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 per year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so that you don't have to it saved johnny d money it saved all of us money it'll save you money true bill has over two million users and helped them save over 100 million dollars like matthew b who says in a matter of seconds i saved 660 dollars for the year on my direct tv bill saved 120 dollars for the year on my series xm bill and saved 840 dollars a year on car insurance matt you rocking son lunch is on you don't fall for subscription scams start canceling today at truebill.com slash duck Go right now, truebill.com slash duck duck. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash duck. Maybe we need to redefine it. Redefine instead what? Of, instead of a midlife crisis, oh. Oh. every human being, male, or, and I imagine even women do it too, and sometime in their life, okay, they're going to take an inventory of where they – where they at? Where they think they should be? You know, and 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 and, and then start doing jujitsu. Yeah. You know? Well, no, no, because it's like uh, okay, a religious man. Yeah. Oh, you're going the serious route. Well, no, no, I'm just saying I both like ways. It. Okay. A religious man, okay, is tell me, okay, where am I at? You know, my faith is not the, at the strength I think it should be, or this and that. You know, everybody's always taking inventory of of where they are at. Where they should think they should be, you know, or where they want to be. You know, I want to be at this point in my life. Like a lot of people say, okay, you know, how how long am I going to work before I retire? I'm ready. No, 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 I'm serious. <laughs> a couple okay, more days. I'm serious. People think about this and say, okay, no, I, I, don't want, I don't want to be like Dad. He had to work till he was 65 years old before he could retire. I want to retire like when I'm 50. Well, you better get on a stick and really get, you know, <laughs> make some money and put some money and investments and all this stuff. But on the flip side of that, I, I see, well, most people, when they retire, they get bored. They just start slowly kicking dirt in their face. Well, no, 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 no. Cause, and, hey. if, you ain't, if you're not active, you're not doing anything. Yeah. You okay. fix, that fix puts you in the ground. That's, that's something I've learned throughout the years of my 73 years on this earth. Okay, if you just quit, you know, someone is fixing to go to your funeral. <laughs> okay, you've got to, God didn't create you or make you, okay, to sit on your rear end. Okay, you got to stay mobile. That's it. You got to be doing something. And to size credit, even though he has COPD, which is a good excuse. To sit on your rear end and do nothing. So I don't slow down. He's wide open. Well, I wish that was something I could actually stop because I'd be a lot better off if I could do it in moderation. Yeah. I don't know that that's okay. true, though. Well, no, no. If you well, slow yeah. down, I mean, you already no, no, take no. 18 well, naps a day. There's some places, well. <laughs> there's some times that you need to do things slowly. And once you get my age, uh, do something slowly now, okay? Because if you do it too fast, you go hurt yourself. Oh, he does everything fast. He, he, he's <laughs> yeah. got one gear. So, yeah. so we go hunting with my buddy. 
<laughs> but Arkansas, he's, he's got a stand 20 feet up in the air. It's ten, like a house, 10 by 10. Staircase goes straight up. Did you get in there? John David. It's a staircase goes straight up. It's a nice staircase. I ain't getting it, in It's that. stable. So I said, Si, I said, take your time. We got time. plenty of time. I said, oh, it's okay, no problem. I said, take five steps, stop, <laughs> breathe. I mean, he's got COPD for crying out loud. I look up and he is just boom, 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 well, boom, 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 all the way to the top. Me. We're going in a deer stand and there's, and there's seven of us going in. So it's <laughs> seven people? No, no, yeah. It's a house. Look, I'm thinking oh, yeah. deer hunting, get in the stand, sit down, and, and, and get the hunts going. So Jeff turned around, I said, he turned around. He said, I thought Stone told you to take it easy coming out. I said, well, I did. No, you said, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I had to sit down a little bit. Yeah. I had to take a hit of oxygen. But I mean, hey, I was, oxygen, my mind is on deer hunting, okay? <laughs> that was, that so was a fun thing. Thing, okay, too. it's best to slow down yeah. and do it, you know, at a, low, a slower speed. Mm. I'm going to make safety. a new drink called the Cy Roberts. Yeah, yeah. Half oxygen, half tea. I like <laughs> it. It's like Arnold Palmer's half lemonade, half tea. We're going to make the Cy. Half oxygen, half tea. Uh, that way you can get you a little recoup, huh? That's it. Hey. <laughs> well, just a splash of lemon. <laughs> I was say, you heard the a little lemon A lot of lemon juice. That's right. It was a splash. Three. three, three. How, how many of your little packets you got on you right now? I got three right here. <laughs> okay, just making sure. <laughs> I'll have to hit it again here. In a minute. It keeps them on them. <laughs> oh, I love it. Right back on what we're talking about, okay? Yeah. It's okay to, to do that because all you're doing is you're taking inventory of your life you know, of where you want to be, where you're at, okay, and then what, you know, then you look at it and say, okay, now what's the plan? What am I going to do to get where I want to be? Yeah. Yeah. Introspection is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, plans change. The problem is, the problem is when introspection turns into like depression. Yeah. When you when you when you get caught in yeah, looking when back you look on at where you're at, and you don't like what you're saying, in and it's woe is me, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah, some people go on the other end of that instead of taking it as a challenge to get to the next level. Yeah. They get caught in that rut right there, yeah. and they can't come out of yeah. it. That's when it becomes a bad. Yeah, thing. Then it's a bad thing. And I think that's when you probably hit the term of crisis. Yeah, mm. yeah. When you you're know. not doing, when you're you've looked at it, and then you've given up. You're not doing anything to either help it, hurt it, or something. Yeah. Just do, you know, do something. <laughs> <laughs> even, even if it's wrong, do something. Well, you know, just, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, I think he's talking about wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not spiritually wrong or morally yeah, wrong. I think yeah. he's like, just try something. Just do different. nothing. Even okay. if you do it the wrong way. Like yeah. Jason, Jason's always said, okay, the definition of insanity is that you keep doing the same thing. And you expect a different result. Yeah. <clears throat> Change something. Yeah. Change something. You don't like where you're at. Okay. You know, it's like a person that's trying to lose weight. If you're not losing weight, then you're not doing something right. Change your diet. Change your workout. Change something. Because, hey, if you're still just continuing to get heavier, what you're doing is not working, and for you to think it's going to do anything different, uh, wrong answer, dude. Wrong answer. Wrong answer, dude. Wrong answer. <laughs> Change your diet. Uh, like me. I probably need to give up, uh, you know, black walnut. No, 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 no. But at no. my age, I'm not. At 73? <laughs> Don't change nothing. No. Keep on rocking no. what you're rocking, son. He's 70. I thought he was 74. It nope. will be. That'll be in April. In about, oh, okay. in about yeah. three weeks. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to Google it. We're going to have Sai's birthday party right here on the podcast. That's right. Last year, he showed up with a hat and a boa. Uh-huh. He had everything. Looked like he oh, fresh look, out of Mardi Gras. Another year, another year going by, son. Another year, baby. Bullfrog, Bullfrog says she'll make you a, a big pan oh, of homemade biscuits. talking about that, you need to ask your daughter, uh -oh. okay? And I'm not bad-mouthing her. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> but hey, she was off her feed the other night when we was over and I ate the steak because she didn't eat the steak. That was the first clue. She was off her because she didn't eat none of the steak that he cooked for us. Okay. Okay, so that was the first thing, antenna went up, and then the cake was a total disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And it, hey, uh, she either 
She either forgot to put something in it. I'm uncomfortable. Okay, or put, or either the sour cream she used was bad because uh, the flavor was not there. And and I, when I'm saying it was a disaster, it normally when she she sprays Pam, I think, on the inside of it, and it's when it's baked, she just. Turns it over. So you want to be friends with Sai. No, no. You Robertsons are all hard. No, no, no. Yeah. no, no. Golly. That's why I what happened to Grace and Mercy, y'all? No, no don't about. worry. He said he doesn't mean to offend her no, no. right before he yeah. said it. Well, no, no. no. Yes. That's why I said, boy, hey, look, it was a total disaster. <laughs> but but he, okay. he prefaces with, I don't want to hurt her feelings, but. It's no, no. a total disaster, but I just could not eat more than three pieces. It was terrible. No, no. Look, <laughs> BK cooks these things perfect. Yeah. Okay, this one was. So you think there's something wrong in her life? Well, no, no. It's something going on is all I said. Okay, because no more she didn't eat any of the good stuff. You're scared to death it could be a little boy, aren't you? Well, no, no, no. I'm just oh, okay. saying. Well, yeah, it's, she's, hey, getting, that, she's getting, getting that age. She's getting that age where it may be a little boy that crazy. She's where it may be. Distraction. No, I don't yeah. think, no. <clears throat> but something I don't, I don't was think she's going to be boy crazy. She, yeah, but she something had her distracted because no more. The mother ones, though, yeah. She did not eat the steak that you had cooked. Which was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think she was feeling bad that day. Well, no, no, I'm serious. She was I was worried yeah. about her. I really was. Yeah. I was worried about her. She ruined my cake. Yeah. Well, no, no. no and I now I'm going to tell no, everybody no, no. that she made a bad cake. No, no. We no, brag no. and hey, brag about her, but the me. one hey. time the cake wasn't Look, perfect, was you worried. throw it out to the world. I was worried Robertson. about my partner. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Some you know, Willie, all Phil, all side Jace. Day, I was actually worried about his daughter. <laughs> all of them. Okay. Yeah. No, but I'm. One <laughs> mistake, and they're just throw no, you to the walls. They they ain't on that baseball bag. Ain't no three strikes. No. Oh, Strike no. one, BK. <laughs> Out. So you were genuinely worried. I was genuinely oh, worried. She's, That's a, true. she's all right, though. She's back. Oh, by the way, she she just started coming to uh, jiu-jitsu class with me. And I hope she heard okay. that. Well, I was fixing I was wondering when she was going to get oh, she's tired fine. of Sage. You know, yeah, she is, because she likes to do what Daddy does. Well, no, know, no, but I'm just saying, you know, because Sage has been a little, she's been, you know, kind of uh, irritating BK. Well, she, and that's I was what thinking to myself, at. I said, she's that, fixed to get seven sick. Year old. She's fixed to get sick of this, Sage. <laughs> and uh, now she's turning to turn to jujitsu. She's sick of it. I think we found uh, Bullfrog's motivation for her jujitsu workout, though. Just play that little clip of how bad her cake was from her oh, favorite. No, no, oh. hey, look, I ate the cake, okay? But it wasn't up to its regular standard. No, you, said, no, no, you said it was rent. Well, no, no. There's it, a difference between well, not it, being You called it a disaster. a disaster. Well, it was a disaster. Look, y'all didn't see it. Okay, y'all didn't see it. I saw it. it. I thought. I thought the same. I thought, boy, well, you know that that would no, no, look she, like it normally does. Oh no, it wasn't. But I didn't try it. Well, no, no, because I'm telling you. Okay. And yeah. you didn't dare tell your little girl nothing. No. You? See. See, I'll have to talk to her now. Yeah, that's terrible. You are gonna have to apologize. <laughs> well, for no, this. I will. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying. As I you eat worried, another piece of cake. I was actually worried about her. I'm I hope serious. the next yeah. one she puts X lax in. Just no, no. Hey, I'm going to tell her. Say, hey, hit that, <laughs> hit that vanilla twice. This, that, <laughs> oh, now okay. you gonna make it. Now better. he's critiquing. She hey, makes hey. the best cake on earth. But let me tell her how Look, to do I it. I critique it every time. You, uh -huh. Roberts. I said, hey, because the first time she did that double, double, uh, what, uh -huh. what kind of uh, uh, vanilla extract was it she got? Uh, oh, it must it have was been bourbon, fat or bourbon, oh. vanilla extract. Yeah. And instead of giving it one shot, BK said, let's give it another one. And I said, BK, whatever you did on this last cake, I said, me and my wife both, as soon as we ate it, said, oh, my goodness. What did you do different? Whatever it was, do it again next oh, time. Okay. Well, I was just okay. making sure. Yeah. Well, let's take another so, break. So we'll the double back. bourbon oh, here we go. vanilla extract is in, boys. It's in, boys. And yeah. we're out. Let's take <laughs> a break. Right, take a break. <laughs> what? Y'all are not wearing your Tommy Johns? <laughs> I got mine on. Do you? Yeah. I love them. Hey. I got about 14 pair of them. You, you have 14 pair of Tommy Johns? I'm serious. Look, that keeps you from having to hunt for your eggs, don't it? That's it, boys. Hey. What Look, is that? just because just it's spring don't mean you have to spend time hunting for eggs. The right pair of underwear puts all your eggs in one basket and helps keep them there. That's Tommy John's hammock pouch underwear. That's it, boys. Hey. Bravo, Ryder. That's I the guarantee. reason Tommy John does not have fans, boys. We're what do they have, Si? We're fanatics. There it is. When you're wearing Tommy John's hammock pouch underwear, you're that much more comfortable, so you 
can do everything better, even if that everything is sitting in that chair and drinking tea That's with an absurd point. amount of lemon in it. With dozens of comfort information, in, yeah, with dozens of comfort innovations, once you've tried Tommy John underwear, you're never going back. Innovations like an air mesh interior hammock and moisture wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands, plus the legs never ride up. And Tommy John underwear comes with a non rolling waistband for the perfect fit. So that spare tire side won't even dig into your side. That's a good thing. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. What do they have, Si? Fanatics. Fanatics that call Tommy John's hammock pouch one of life's greatest inventions. With over 17 million pairs sold, men across America love their Tommy John underwear. And you will, too. Shipping and returns are free because every pair is backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee right now. You can get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash duck. Go to TommyJohn.com slash duck for 20% off. That's right. And never, it, it's the compliest thing you'll ever put on. TommyJohn.com slash duck. See site for details. That's the most Robertson thing I've seen. I see. Look, I always used to tell people you wouldn't like to rest up. Well, hey, look, he got criticism, it in him. Criticism <laughs> criticism is loving criticism is good. Next thing uh, you're gonna I be telling her to put sweet. Criticism. Next see, thing you're gonna be telling her to put sweet condensed milk in her dressing. I think no, y'all I missed the that. loving part. I tried sometimes. that. That's a bummer. But he know why he did that. He he said he had a dream. I had a dream that I actually watched my mother do that, and it was a false dream. Okay, it was, it, I made that up in my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, so you have okay. false dreams? Well, that, yeah, because that didn't work. Everything's right. becoming no, So clear. he called me up on the phone. I thought it was yeah. an emergency. He oh, said, yeah. hey, yeah. hey. Get over here. Stop, no, no. I told somebody, hey, uh, Sal si wants you to call him. He goes, hurry up, call him. It's, so I called him. I said, hey, is everything all right? And he said, no, 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 no. I need you to come down here and try this dressing. Get over here now. And, you know, I live 25 minutes yeah. away from you. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. said, I got two guys of dressing. I did this and that. And he said, okay. I ain't going to tell you what I did. Just come over here and try it. You got to taste so, it. I, I trust I go, you. To tell me I hope you use the word disaster. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't. Look, it was actually decent. Okay. Yeah. But he, you know, him and my wife both said, I don't care for the sweet. No, it wasn't. I mean, okay. it, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't as. You would say it ain't much. Yeah, it ain't much. So <clears throat> I go over there and no. and I walk in the door. The first thing I smell is it's like burnt fat <laughs> when I open the door. Sweet. So I look over there. The toaster. <laughs> no. <laughs> no si, Si's got them got them wood ducks or teal, whatever he had. Probably wood ducks. It's wood ducks. We don't see teal yeah, anymore. He had wood ducks sitting on top of his dressing, and they was as black as that can right there. <laughs> They they had that burnt a little bit on the crispy side. <laughs> I okay. said, well, okay, that's where that burnt smell is coming yeah, from. That's burnt smell. I said, but I don't, I'm not gonna eat the duck. I'm just gonna yeah. try the dressing. So well, he, all I used the duck for was yeah, the broth. Just just the uh, broth and presentation. Yeah. But I'd have thrown that mess in the trash. But so <laughs> he he laid them two dressings out in front of me. He said, I right, try this one first. I ain't gonna tell you what I did. I try this one first and try that one. So I tried tried the one. First, it, it had a little sweet to it, and I'm like, he put a bunch of sugar in it. Yeah, is hey, what I you, thought. You put some sugar in this one. That's sweet. I said, well, okay, you got that right. But I will say, it was edible. Yeah, it was edible. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have. No, gone back. you didn't care for the the sweet. I wouldn't have gone hey. back from sec for seconds. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Now I went to the other one, and it tasted a lot more like dressing. Yeah. Dressing, what Mama yeah. makes, you know, yeah. except it had way too much sage in it. Oh no. Oh yes, I like that sage. Yeah, yeah. He he big feels, on that. Phil's always Phil is always light on it, bro. and it was a little dry, but it was it was. I got good. His but eyes. he had a really good start to a bread pudding, is what you're saying <laughs> yeah. on that other one. Yeah, yeah. He bread. had a really good bread pudding. Corn, he was getting there, baby. It was yeah. cornbread pudding, is what yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> All he needed was some of that bourbon vanilla, and he'd have been in. The oh thing. yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what it was missing. Put some of that black walnut on top of it. That's right. Uh, that's shave you some black walnuts, and yeah. you really have a time. But anyways, I more I thought, boy, something something done happened to side. I go over there. No, nope, I just need to taste the dressing. No, nope, he fell asleep with the Food Network on. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. And he had a false dream. Yeah, he had a false dream. Uh, which explains a lot. Well, hey, there you go. Hey. False well, dream. I, mean, I thought it was a vision. But Did I we ever like... decide anything about midlife crisis? Is, I mean, Wait, is the whole episode. Hey, I don't know. Did we? I don't think so. I don't think I'm not that. there yet. I, I don't think. Ask the man. He's the one that asked the question. I think your point about 
when you get to the crisis. That's when stage. it becomes a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. But, you should uh, change things up midlife, though. Sometimes. Well, right. Almost you know, all the time. Really. So when yeah. I, I was in a, in a little bit of what you would call a rut, I guess, I just want to get myself out of that rut, set myself a new goal, mm-hmm. and get after it. And yeah, look at you go. That's why I told you, if you enjoy doing it, go for it. And it doesn't have to be anything extreme. No. But I mean, look look at what Johnny D did. I mean, he lost. How much weight did you lose? 30. 30 Three. pounds. 33 it. pounds. We're, well, we're at back at 30, though. Yeah. So you're on your way back up? I ain't on my way. I've been maintaining. He's planing out. I'm planed out, but I'm about to jump back on it. Well, the weather's getting right. The weather's QB's just been rough. And it'll be daylight. I'm going to tell you, QB does What's, that. By the way, did did we see what the Senate passed yesterday? I called it, boys. Daylight we, savings time. All the time. Starting in 2023. It's just got to go through that Senate? crazy oh, house. The time? Yeah, it's oh, got to go right. through the crazy house. They which, said no more fallback. And then we got to get Sleepy Joe to sign on to it. And then we'll fall back one more time. <laughs> and then, we'll and then spring next forward. time we'll spring that thing forward and we ain't looking back. And we're locking it in. Also, dear folks of Seattle, I understand why you don't like that because the sun will rise at 9. But I'm selfish and I'm voting for myself here. And if we're being honest, you really like being in Seattle. Anyway. Yeah, come on down. Yeah. Move to the middle. Uh, if you're in Seattle, you're sleepless. That's all <laughs> you ain't getting no sleep Seattle. anyway. Right, you ain't getting no sleep right. anyway. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, they've always been known to do their own thing over there on the West Coast anyway. Yeah, so, switch yeah. time zones. Yeah, do the fine. Godwin thing and just move it 30 minutes. Yeah, do whatever you're going to do. But <laughs> well, I will. I, you know how awesome duck season 2023 is going to be? Do you know how you awesome? You won't have to wake up in the fours. You can it's going to be the, the fives. fives. Wow. And then you How about that? That wake mentally up, you're like, at okay. Instead of 430. And then even after work – you can still do something. A little bit. It's you still going to get dark early. It gets dark early, but you still got 30 I'm, minutes. I'm still going to have to wake up in the fours. I, I was waking up in the threes. Okay, so we're going to weed that three out. The threes out. No more threes. Right. No more threes. He's up to the four. If I'm waking up at three, up to the five. your boy ain't going to sleep. <laughs> like I said, if, it's, if, the, if the alarm says three something, all right, I'm just staying up. It's a handful of times a year mine has to say That's that. That's the way I am. Play poker at 3.30. Hey. Go to the house, change clothes. It's four thirty. Sleep now in the running, driveway. Go down. Go down to the oh, lot. Herb over. It, it's hard for me to believe that there's that many grown adults in this area that can stay up to three and four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I I don't want to and play poker. Oh look, oh I can't do that. It's adults and juveniles. Y'all you got can't say you're playing poker oh, oh, with no, juveniles. No, I'm coming up. I'm Dear coming FBI, up. I'm coming please up disregard I'm driving, the last statement. I, I, when I'm on the highways driving to where oh, I'm yeah, going wait, to you know, I, When I was a teenager, I stayed up all night. Hey, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. just never. Yeah, I'm, I was talking never. about grown people. Never mind. I'm grown. I go to bed. I go to bed at midnight. One of the things about hey, you got something that you need to have fun doing. I finally figured out nothing good happens between the hours of 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. Midnight is not time to go to bed. Is it nothing? Is it dark? Nothing. That's when all of the mischief happens. That's it. It's dark. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing good happens between 12 a.m. and 4 (laughs) a.m. The mischief. 4 a.m. with the time that we have, you sometimes have to get up to go to the boat ramp or the duck hole or something. So that's why I cut it off at 4. But from 12 to 4, things have gone terribly wrong for you. you. If you're awake, things have gone terribly wrong. You can get six hours of sleep and be fine. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thrive off about six. Okay, I'm just making sure I was normal. Yeah, no, I thrive. My friend off thinks about I'm weird because he sleeps like eight, nine, ten hours. Mm. I'm like, How, what are you doing? I couldn't even what, guess what the last time. I have to be weird because you're sleeping, yo. All right, Rip <laughs> Bam, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we're throwing you out of this. Like that doesn't okay. matter. Oh, I took a it. nap every day I, for 24 it, years. Look, Christine called me the other day and she said, <laughs> "Sai has been sleeping for 16 hours." <laughs> I said, well, go in there and make sure he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> she, she come in there. She come in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm laying there. And she's, are you going to get up? And I said, why should I? She said, because it's like 1230 in the afternoon. I said, again, why should I? Yeah, I've already slept half a day away. Let's go. Let's and go ahead and said, finish well, her okay, off. Okay, I'll get up. Because you're missing. I, I got up for about an hour and a half, which now it's, it's one, it's two o'clock. I said, well, I'm going to take a nap. Hashtag get goals, back, man. Oh, get back man. in bed and sleep to four. Well, let's uh, take a break. We'll be back and <laughs> wonder how he's awake enough to do this. Hey, that's so. why I'm so pretty, boys. Okay, that's I get my beauty rest. Beauty rest.
All right, we ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah, we're yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Let's get in that mailbag, Johnny D. Hello at duckcallroom.com. That's the email address. What What is up in that bag? That's my email week? address. Well, Larissa. 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 She emails in, and I liked her question, especially since we have two vets in the room. Uh, her and her husband have been together for 11 years, started dating in high school, married for seven years with three small children. Good gracious. Oh, my goodness. Um, that's a lot of kids. I know from experience, so does Stone. He is currently in his 10th year of serving in the U.S. Navy. Thank you, Larissa's husband, whose name we do not have. And thank you, Larissa, uh, for what you do. Amen. Um, he doesn't like talking about his deployments. She respects that. But how can I best support him is her question. So I'm going to – I don't know. If, were you married when you were in Afghanistan? No. No. Thank, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <clears throat> were you married? I, I was. So not when I was in, in Vietnam, but in in the military. In so military. what's a good way for a wife to support? Because what she's doing is crazy. She's did. raising three kids. You already mm. did it. while her husband's deployed. While he's deployed, you're at home taking care of the kids and business. Okay, running the household. Okay, you know, and then com communication back and forth between you and your husband. Yeah, which nowadays is a lot better because there's all kind of Good stuff you can use, Facebook and all this stuff, you yeah. know, where you can actually see each other's face yeah. while you're talking to each other. I think, you're, you're already doing it, darling. And and I don't or really you. know a whole lot about this, but I do appreciate one thing that, that she said, that he doesn't like to talk about his deployments when he comes home, and she respects that rather than trying to pull it out of him. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I, I think – that right there says a ton about your character, Larissa, is that you respect those boundaries that even as a husband and wife that are up, that's awesome. Well, instead, it may, instead, it may be the deal about, okay, the husband, okay, may have a job that, you know, he don't want to share with the family. Yeah, yeah, and that's awesome that you don't yeah. try to pry yeah. it out yeah. of him. Then, I, I can yeah. tell you, even though if he doesn't say thank you, he, he does appreciate yeah. Yeah. that. Mm -hmm. so. And I think we'll, we'll say thank you to all the moms out oh. there staying home with their kids yeah. while our men are out there doing whatever it is they do. You know, that's, well, that's nice. I'm thankful for these two guys. I'm thankful for other guys I know and thankful for all of them and thankful for the strong women that stay at home. And, and that goes Absolutely. both ways because there's a lot of women serving. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. They, they deploy and the man is yeah. a civilian. He stays home and takes care of business. 100%. Yeah. Yep. No, that's okay. awesome. So it, I, I it goes both ways, but that's why I tell you, you're already doing uh, – there's probably something, if you really think about it, you know, more that you might do that you could call supporting him. But you're already doing the major stuff of being there at home, taking care of his and your kids, okay, and taking care of life in general. Just do yeah. not serve him a poorly done pound cake. <laughs> it could yeah. be a disaster. Y'all get off of that. Uh, I'll, Just I'll, be I'll, nice. I'm going to tell you what. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I noticed <clears throat> with the married guys that uh, that I served with in Afghanistan, they always look forward to, to getting something in the mail, notes, just pictures, whatever. But uh, with, in your situation, I would say I, I'm sure you're already writing him notes. Get your kids to write him notes. Um Write him notes, keep him up to date on everything, you know, that's, and just keep doing what you're doing. Cause like Uncle Si said, uh, you're doing the hard part yeah. already. Yeah. So, you know, just, uh, I, I, I would suggest if you're not already doing it, take a little more time and, and try to keep the a steady flow of letters coming. Yeah. That's even more important. Share, share what you do during the day with your kids, no matter how stupid it may sound. Okay, because trust me when I tell you, dad will want to know what's going on back home. Mm -hmm. What are the kids doing? What crazy stuff did they, that they're putting you through? <laughs> okay, you don't think a seven-year-old would be crazy, That way you? he's there. <laughs> Three with kids you. probably under seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That way he's there with you when you share that moment with in your letters or either your Facebook time. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, it, he's actually... Yeah, he's there with y'all. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, because I got three kids under eight, and my wife's going to a Bible study tonight, and I'm nervous. Just <laughs> I got to get myself psyched up, so I couldn't imagine a deployment. So thank you so much for everything you do. All right, next one, Vaughn. 
He says, P.S., please answer this on the podcast because he's sure there are other people in similar situations. So I'm going to. Uh, he's 21. He's got his own wife. Got a kid. And his question is, how can I get my dad to treat me as an adult? This bothers me in a way that doesn't really bother me. That's a weird thing to say. Any advice would be very helpful. Start acting like an adult. Just because you're 21 and you got a kid don't mean you're acting like an adult would be my guess. Generally, parents do that when people continue to do things that are childish decisions. Reproducing doesn't make you a man. Um, Martin with the tough guy. I'm just saying. I mean, I don't, you know. <laughs> no, I, right. I, I, he's got a point. I mean, I'm just saying well, that, that doesn't, just because you're 21 with a kid doesn't mean that you're an adult. We all mature at different stages of our lives. There's not, that's why I hate like 18 and 21 is like these benchmarks where you're supposed to be a man, have it figured out. You can do this. You can do that. Like there's, I mean, some, I know some people that matured at 16. Like I, I, I've been very honest. It took me about 24, 25 years to pull my head out of my rear end. Like I wouldn't, I wasn't ready for any of that at 21. I was still very much a kid doing childish things doing and he knows somebody things. that's like 65 or 73 that hadn't matured yet oh you're plenty <laughs> mature you've raised a family you've raised two two young no, no, but and, I, that's one but, question i have to ask him okay have you got any siblings yeah are you the oldest are you the baby yeah. they may be holding on to yeah. something are you the only yeah. child but but because i know for me okay like my brothers never treated me as a man he was the baby. I was always the kid brother. Yeah. Okay, and I'd have to look at him sometime and tell me, hey, I'm 50 years old, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm married and got two kids. All right? I've, I've spent you know, a lifetime in the military, Yeah. yeah. and y'all are acting like I'm still a child. Oh, uh, you know? but that's because so that, you, that you kept them young. Well, I don't know, yeah, but that's, that's a good where thing. it may be with why. Okay, there's yeah. a lot of factors here that, we don't, gonna, that we don't know. Yeah. When is dad going to actually treat me like a man? It may nothing be have nothing to do with you. It may be where you was at in the family unit. Yeah, could mm -hmm. be. There's a yeah. lot of factors we don't know. But. Yeah, because yeah. I, I I share a little bit with Sai. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was the youngest sister. It felt like because I had all girl cousins, and I was the youngest <laughs> grandkid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, my advice would be. Tell your dad. Yeah. Every once in a while. Too. Talk to I mean, me and my dad have or had just some asking. real conversations. Yeah. Been like, just hey. Flat out ask me. Yeah. Hey, why are you treating me? You know, I, I, I think you're treating me like a child. You know, I'm 21 years old and I'm married and I've got a, you know, a, a young one to take care of. Yeah. I could you know? tell the difference in my dad when he realized that I had pulled my head out of my rear end. You know, it, it, it went from coaching to helping so to speak like on how to do the certain things and this that and the other then he would let me do it first and then he'd come over and fix what i screwed up instead, well, I, of, just, I would fix instead of just taking the bull by the horns and doing it himself he would let me give it a whirl because he was extremely mechanically inclined you know, and could being honest you thing. gave him some good advice yeah is this is this really on your shoulders that you are acting immature and that yeah. may be the reason the dad's treating you that way. And if you ask, and him, he's protecting you. Yeah, don't don't yeah. let your dad. I yeah. mean, your dad is still trying yeah. to protect you and be a father by doing that. Yeah. And uh, but he's your dad has to learn the when to let go too, when to unclip the leash and and let you run. You know, so it's a it, there's a there's a balancing act in there. But there's there's no doubt there's a lot of factors in here that we weren't told in a three sentence email. Yeah, so. I don't know if this will help you, okay, because. Uh, Growing up, okay, I, I have four older brothers. Dad seemed to me, and this is just my viewpoint, okay, to me it was he loved Phil more than he loved me, okay? And and that was far from the truth because one day we actually got in a duck blind, just me and him, and I, I finally confronted him with it and said, you know, you know, you love Phil, and he said, no, that's not it at all. He said, he needs my help more than you do. Okay? He's always got to be in the spotlight, so to speak. You don't have to be. You know, so, it was, so it's one of the things that your viewpoint or your perspective, it may be right or it could be out of focus and wrong. Because mine was totally out of focus 
Okay, and dead wrong. Very insightful. Yeah. No, no, I'm serious. That's what's up. <laughs> no, no, oh, yeah. no, no, That's no. what's up. And, and, no, no. and the manliest thing you did there was sit down and have a real conversation. Well, well, this is how I feel. Well, I'm not asking. Okay, yeah. I said, because, hey, it's bothering me. You know, and then he says, he, he said, you'll understand this more once you get married and you have kids of your own. He said, because it don't many have, depend on how many you have, you can't treat them the same. That's They're right. different individual beings. That's what's up. We disregard you know, everything we yeah. said prior to that. That's right. Yeah. Boom. That's right. And that, because that, that really, right there is yeah. what's up. On yeah. that note, yeah. What's, yeah. what's our Bible yeah. verse today? Yeah. <laughs> and also, I'm going to go ahead while you're finding that. I got it. I, oh, okay. You, but, go, 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 go. No, just thank you to whoever sent the gourmet popcorn in. It showed up today. There was no note. It just <laughs> was four bags of gourmet yeah. popcorn. I didn't order it, and it was shipped to me, so I'm assuming one of you did. Thank you. Let us know who you are. Somebody sent a bag of chili. Okay, that's from Cincinnati. No, no they sent two weird. Bags. They sent two. two bags. I'm sorry. Hmm. That's weird. And Sam was the best. But All right, hit it, Johnny. You're Dorn. right, and you know I like that how Sai ended that because I think sometimes we got our view as a man screwed up. And here's a verse for you. First Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only reflection as in a mirror. Then, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Mm -hmm. Sometimes... In this world, we think being a man's being tough, being all this, and you know, I'm surrounded by three pretty tough dudes, but I know they all love me, and that's the greatest that way to be a man, and it's love. There you go. It's right there. Boom. Amen. We'll see y'all next that's time. It. We're out.